So one of the biggest problems that I hear and see from people when they're back here in their uh, panel behind the refrigerator, a lot of times is loose wires that are touching in the refrigerator cooling unit up here. Now, if you have these wires touching any of these hot parts, you can obviously have the wires melt, they can short out, they can even possibly create a fire. So one of the simplest and easiest fixes that I like to do is simply take zip tie and tie the wires off somewhere where you can get them off those hot areas. Or if you have an area where the wires are say going up the chimney up in here, I've even seen like Grand Design Techs just take like HVAC tape and tape the wires up against the wall. Just anything to remove the possibility of those wires shorting out or creating a fire. And you can come back here and inspect and look at the wires. See if you see any that are actually starting to melt or stick to areas that they shouldn't be or any kind of like singeing or burning on the wire. That's obviously a good indication that something needs to be moved and changed. Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Wait. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Chris and today we're talking about basic RV refrigerator maintenance, but maybe not in the area that you think or in the area that most people actually come and check, but should. If you have a RV propane electric fridge, you should be coming back here a minimum of twice a year to check things out. Now you may not know, but a number of RV refrigerator repair issues can actually just be solved with some basic preventive maintenance and some good old fashioned cleaning back here. Plus, this is also the number one area for RV fires. So you do want to come back here and inspect every once in a while to make sure things look good because you don't want any unwanted accidents. Now, what does basic cleaning and preventive maintenance, you know, entail coming back here? Now, it's pretty simple, actually. And one of the biggest things is just a lot of dirt and dust can build up back here, as well as spider webs and things like that. So you want to keep things clean from all that dirt and debris the best you can. And that's going to actually keep your refrigerator unit running more efficient and longer. And all you have to do is simply take an air chuck and kind of blow out the area back here. Maybe get just a little bit of a damp rag and wipe out certain areas just to keep things clean, as well as inspect for those mud daubers, wasps, and any other critters and spiders that may get in here. One little trick that I used to use was actually a cat flea collar. There's something about a cat flea collar. I had issues actually in my water heater area, and I cut up a few pieces of a cat flea collar and set them in there. And sure enough, I never had a problem with wasps ever again. But better yet, one of the things you can do is get these Camco screens right here. I have these on my refrigerator, my water heater, as well as my furnace. And that's really going to prevent those wasps and mud daubers from getting inside here and building those unwanted nests. Next up, one of the important things you want to inspect is the burner assembly and the chimney going up. Now you basically just want to inspect the flame before you go taking everything apart. If you have like a real light yellowish or orangish tint flame, you may want to just get an air chuck and blow some dirt and dust out of there to clean that out. If not, if it's looking even worse than that, if blowing the air out doesn't work and get that flame looking better, you can actually just simply take this chimney apart right here and you can clean some of the components out, including the igniter. If you guys have high flame and it's blue like that and it's looking good, you shouldn't have to take anything apart or change anything. That That's actually flowing really good. But if the flame looks good, I just recommend honestly just leaving it alone, especially if you're not too comfortable with disassembling some of this. Now, if you do need to take this apart, you're gonna to have to disengage the housing around the burner assembly right there. And that's going to allow you to clean a blocked or defective burner assembly, which is known to accumulate crap you know, over time that's gonna hinder the burner's ability to basically properly cool your unit and maintain a high level of efficiency. So that's something that's a little bit more in depth, but that's one of the biggest areas that you can clean if you've never checked this out in say a few years or so, you've never looked back here or blown it out there, you might wanna go ahead and do that. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to check this little tube right here. And this goes all the way up into your refrigerator. You guys have those fins inside there where the condensation builds up. It goes in that drip tray, goes through the hose, comes down through here. You wanna check this little cap right here. Make sure the cap is on here. This allows water to come out, but it doesn't really allow any moisture or air to come back in, which again, would possibly mess with the uh, efficiency of the fridge. This little tray right here is going to fill up with water and some other nasty stuff. Uh, just simply take it, unscrew it, take it out, empty it out once in a while, and you should be good to go with that. One of the last things you should check on are your fans. You should have some fans in here because you're basically pulling the cool air in from outside through here 
and it's all working its way up like a chimney effect going up to the top panel where it is basically forced out. You don't want a lot of space in between here and the unit. You should only have like an inch or so. And you want to make sure these fans, I have a fan here and I have another fan halfway up that is pulling that air and pushing it out. There's actually some modifications you can get too with some higher efficiency fans that actually attach right to the back of the panel here to even allow more cold air and allow more air to suck in and blow more air through to keep things cooler on those coils even better. And again, we'll check out up top and that's where everything should be sealed off pretty good and basically it just forces that air out at the top. You don't want a big, huge open area at the top of your RV fridge up there with air where the warm air is just going to sit, kind of circulate, and never kind of push itself out after it goes over the coils. Quick basic recap. Get back here a few times a year. Blow it out with an air chuck if necessary. If it's not too dusty, you can simply just wipe it down. Check for insects, bugs, any sorts of nests, spider webs. Check your burner, assembly, and chimney. Make sure there's no obstructions or anything built up inside there. Make sure that you have your little tube right here with the cap on it still working. Clean out that pan. And the number one thing you can do is check those wires again as a safety hazard because you don't want any unwanted fires or accidents. Make sure your fans are working. That's pretty much it, guys. Just make sure you get back here and check it once in a while. You kind of know what to look for now. Create any unwanted accidents and keep the refrigerator running at its optimal performance. As always, guys, appreciate you watching the video. and We'll see you next time.